Hello everyone, welcome again. Today we'll be talking about the energy module in the Year 11 Chemistry course. And in particular, we'll be talking about properties of alkanes and alkenes. So last time we spoke about the properties, uh, how we name these different alkenes, alkanes and alkynes. And so today we'll be talking about specific properties of each group. So here's a picture of, on the left, there's an alkane mixed with bromine water, which is the brown murky stuff. And on the left, on the right, sorry, is an alkene, which is also mixed with the bromine water. But because of a reaction that happens, um, because of the double bond in the alkene, it decolorizes that bromine water straight away. So we'll talk more about what that is and how it works later in the lesson. So first we need to talk about homologous series. So homologous series, uh, so the prefix HOMO, always means similar or similar to. So here we have all of these little ape looking things eventually evolving into man. So they all have similar properties. So we call them some kind of homologous series. So a homologous series in the context of chemistry means a group of chemicals that share the same functional group. Okay. Now what a functional group is? A functional group is a set of atoms and bonds which are responsible for the properties of that molecule. So a functional group is any sort of additional set of chemicals or bonds as part of a hydrocarbon that give it a particular that give that whole molecule different properties. So a functional group could be a double bond like in the alkenes, it could be a hydroxyl group like in alcohols, it could be a triple bond like in alkynes. So functional groups are anything like that that make it different from the alkane group. Okay? So alkanes and alkenes are two different homologous series because an alkane has functional groups in itself and alkenes have the double bond functional group. So they're two different homologous series. So let's talk about the properties of alkanes now. They're saturated hydrocarbons. So remembering from last lesson, saturated means simply that it has the maximum number of hydrogen attached to it. So in the methane or in the ethane case, the maximum number of hydrogen that can combine with those two carbons is 6. Now the general formula for alkanes is for every carbon you have 2 times as many plus 2. Okay, so n, 2n plus 2. So let's look at say methane, the simplest one. The number of carbons is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 plus 2 is 4, so there are 4 hydrogens, as you can see. And that works, it's quite consistent. And you can check for yourself if propane and butane and ethane work as well. They're non-polar, so remembering from your water topic, there are no polar parts to it, so it only has dispersion forces. Due to the relatively stable C to hydrogen bonds and C to C bonds, um, they're much less reactive than alkenes. Okay? So alkanes are much less reactive than alkene, as you saw from that very first picture that I showed you in today's lesson. Now alkenes are saturated hydro, uh, unsaturated hydrocarbons. So as you can see, that double bond here means that two extra hydrogens that could have connected to these carbons are no longer available. And so there isn't the maximum number of hydrogen, so they're called unsaturated. And the general formula for alkenes is CnH2n. Okay? Now, that just means that for every carbon, there are two times as many hydrogen. And so we can check that with, with these ones. And I'll leave that for you to do as an exercise. Again, they're nonpolar and only contain dispersion forces because there's no uh, very electronegative chemicals there. They're more reactive than alkanes simply because of that double bond. The presence of that double bond means that they're more reactive because that double bond is less stable. So when we look at sort of the, um, the grand total of things as a summary, this is for 
six carbon chain, so hexane and hexene. So they're nonpolar, both of them, and so they only dissolve in nonpolar substances. Uh, the reactivity is low and has a slow reaction with bromine water. The reactivity is high and reacts rapidly with bromine water. The boiling point of alkanes is 69 degrees Celsius, whereas alkenes is 63. So you know that the alkane has a higher temp uh, boiling point than the alkene. And the density for the alkane is lower than the density for alkenes. Okay? So hopefully that you've seen now what some of the properties of alkanes and alkenes are. Because of those different functional groups, they have different properties. So we'll move on to the question segment and hopefully you'll be able to see how to answer these questions based on all the things that we just spoke about. So why would ethene, but butene and propene have similar chemical properties? Well mainly they have, so they have similar numbers of carbon atoms? No, because the number of carbon atoms doesn't solely determine the properties. Because we could have four carbon atoms and four carbon atoms, they wouldn't have the um, same properties because there could be ethene, ethane, they may not have the same properties. They have similar numbers of hydrogen atoms. Okay, again, number of hydrogen atoms doesn't mean anything in terms of its properties. It doesn't solely determine the properties of that chemical. Their densities are similar. Again, density doesn't mean anything in terms of chemical properties. Density is a physical property. They share the same functional group, which is true. They do. They share the double bond functional group. And so the functional groups generally dictate the chemical behavior. So that's why they're all similar. So a chemical has formula C4H10. What is the name of this compound? So four carbons. The stem is butane, or but. Number of hydrogens is two times the number of carbons, plus two. So 10 is 2 times 4, plus 2. So 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So that must be an alkane because it follows that C, uh, so that 2N plus 2 fo um, formula. So the answer must be butane. Okay. So with reference to intermolecular forces, explain why the boiling point of hexane is higher than the boiling point of hexene. Okay. So we're talking about intermolecular forces. And in particular, we're explaining. So remembering that we explain, we, we're talking about causes and effects. So hexane has more electrons and nuclei compared to hexene. Because remember, there's more atoms. There's two additional hydrogen atoms, which contribute two additional electrons. Okay? Now these increased numbers allow greater dispersion forces to take hold on the hexane molecule. Okay? So bigger dispersion forces because there's more electrons. The greater dispersion forces mean higher boiling points as more energy would be required to allow the molecules to achieve free movement. So because those, um, those dispersion forces are stronger, it stops the molecules from achieving that free motion of a gas or it restricts it and thus you, may, you need more energy to get them to that state so you have a higher boiling point. Okay. So that wraps up today's lesson on the properties of alkenes uh, and alkanes. So you've seen what alkenes and alkanes are in terms of their differences, and you've learned what functional groups are. So hopefully you've learned something, and in the next lesson we'll be talking about a first-hand investigation about distilling ethanol and water. So I look forward to seeing you at the next lesson. Mm -hmm.